Welcome to the Lighter Side of the Dark Side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio. Also, all your podcast catchers, Apple, Deezer, Spotify. I've got a free trial to Deezer now. I've been... Oh, by the way, I'm talking to my former co-host, hello, Nicole Six, who hasn't been on the show since November of 2018. It's good to be back. Yes, so we're on uh, TuneIn, we're on uh, iHeartRadio, we're on all sorts, we're going to be on YouTube, we're going to be on everything, all your podcast catchers. Where do you stream these days? Uh, Spotify. You should get the playlist on Spotify. No, I, I, no, I, I, I just uh, had my, <laughs> it's a whole thing. And by the way, uh, drinking water there is our other guest. Isabel Chang, hi. Who is uh, who started <laughs> Godspeed Dating? She is the uh, the she is uh, the administrator of the Facebook uh, Goth Singles on uh, and, and you basically you are the matchmaker of all Goth people in Hollywood. <laughs> You're hooking I'm everybody up. Be. I'm trying to be. That's good. It I, feels and, good. Yeah. And, and, I, and we're gonna. Uh, I definitely can't wait to talk about that. That's awesome. No, I've had free streaming for now. This is gonna be two years after this uh, free trial ends. So I had a free trial to. The, Three months of Spotify, uh, three months of Apple Music, which I didn't like, but uh, if you're listening to us on Apple Music, good for you. Uh, three, uh, six months of Tidal, then, uh, oh yeah, I tried YouTube Music, then I got another th- uh, three month uh, a spot, uh, three month Tidal, because they had the Prince thing last year. Then I got a, a Napster. I tried that for a month. No way. Yeah, and then I had That's still around. Three months, of, three months of Spotify, and now I got three months of Deezer. And honestly, Deezer has the best sound of all of them. Okay. But you know, whatever you're listening to us, I uh, appreciate it. all the people listening on the Castbox and all these other things. Anyway, I didn't mean I didn't mean to start the show off with that whole catalog. This I'm, I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian. If you don't know, uh, we are. This is the lighter side of the dark side. We're going to be talking about goths. Dating, and it looks like we're going to have a psychic reading or two uh, on the show as well. I did bring my cards. She brought it her cards. Well, I didn't know you were a psychic reader. We're talking about that. That's ah. uh, by the way, Nicole Six is, a, as you know, author. Uh, uh, she wrote the book "Some Fucked Up Shit" and "Some Fucked Up Shit Ghosts" and uh, <laughs> uh, all sorts of short stories and comic books and other things. Uh, before we get going, we got uh, some sponsors to get out of the way. Still have Audible. All right. Audible is still a sponsor. If you go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS for the Dark Mark Show, uh, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS, you can get any book you want and two Audible originals, which are a whole whole separate thing. One of the Audible, and and by the way, the books, they have everything from Shakespeare to Stephen King to Smut. Uh, you you have a Stephen King book there. I'm I sure do. it's on Audible. Uh, that's yes. that a new one. This is the new one, The Outsider, and it is on Audible. Okay, there you go. Get, <laughs> that's a recommendation. Get Stephen King, The Outsider, whatever you want. And uh, I'm sure they got they got goth books. They got books on dating. They got books on everything. Uh, and also the Audible originals. Uh, one of the Audible originals, Alien Three. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, wait. William Gibson wrote a script that they didn't use. Okay. So they got Michael Bean, Lance Henriksen, and part of the cast to act it out. That's on that Audible. That's amazing. You can get that free with any book. Uh, Kate McKinnon has a uh, play that she did with her sister. You can get that. I love Kate McKinnon. Uh, they've got uh, uh, John Waters reads a sci-fi novel. They have one that Zachary Quinto in, reads. These are all Audible originals. Bob Newhart interviews new comics like Jed Apatow, Will Ferrell, Sarah Silverman. You know, the comics in their 50s, but he's in his 90s, so they're new to him. So... Uh, just go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS, look around, get a free book, two Audible Originals, 30-day trial, you can cancel the next day, you keep all, you keep the book and the originals, but if you don't cancel, you get deep discounts, as Nicole knows. Hmm. Doomy's Home Cooking is our sponsor. You ever been to Doomy's Home Cooking, Isabel? No, I have not. What? Yeah. You're in the goss scene in Hollywood, you've never been to Doomy's Home Cooking? No, I have not. Are you vegan? No, I'm not. You don't have to be. Well, I totally support veganism, though. Well, yeah, I well, actually I... like to go vegan for, I mean, when I get a chance, like, you know, I'm out with friends or whatever. This is like vegan junk food. Are now, you serious? You were out... Vegan food is delicious. Yeah. You were out late last night. Yes, <laughs> so until 9 a.m. You, you, you probably got some <laughs> some late night breakfast somewhere. I did. So, yeah. You should have gone to Dumi's Home Cooking. We Dumi's went... Kitchen 24 is a place to be, No. <laughs> It's okay, but they don't sponsor the show. Do me some cooking it. does. I will check out. I will check out that place. Well, first off, it's very it's very goth. It's very black and dark mm-hmm. in there. Phil Doomy has, has 
old school Nagasi, and he used to sell tacos at Das Bunker. Oh, wow. It's, okay. Uh, do- Doomies is D-O-O-M-I-E-S, right on 1253 Vine Street, corner of the Fountain Vine. After after the show last week, we took Hannah for her birthday. Yeah. Uh, and listen, this, this, he's, these are what the vegan things that we had. She had a Western bacon cheeseburger with bacon. Uh, I had the chicken parmesan sandwich. They, we had fun fries. Uh, they have chili cheese fries. They have buffalo fries. They have bacon cheese fries. They have all sorts. They have a Sunday brunch. They have a Mexican restaurant next door, the biggest flautas I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Big burritos. They have uh, all sorts of desserts. The desserts are done by Das Baker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the best vegan food you ever had. Yeah. It's all really good. It's really, really good. I had, they have shrimp po' boys. They have pulled pork sandwiches. They have stuff you would never believe. That's the impressive. nachos were one of the, ten, one of the ten best nachos in LA. The only ones without meat. Twelve fifty three Vine Street, corner of Fountain Vine, right by where the M Bar used to be, and um, there's one in Toronto, Canada. Also, Hustler Hollywood is sponsoring us. Ooh. Uh, I love going to the Hustler store. I love going to uh, in Vegas, LA. If you go, we uh, if you check checking out the show on uh, YouTube or on the podcast catchers, or you're on Facebook, Instagram, all of our pages, Twitter. Uh, there is a code that I will that uh, is posted. You get twenty percent off anything and a free gift. So That's get awesome. your lingerie, get your dildos, get your dick pills, whatever you want. <laughs> Hustlerhollywood.com. <laughs> we have a code for you. You get twenty percent off whatever you want. I love Hustler. Hustler. It's always fun to. I like know. to shop there. Yeah, every now and then you, you get you get a little naughty gift. Also, Spy Associates is our latest sponsor. Uh, Spy Associates has uh, cameras and smoke detectors. They have GPS tracking. They have bug detectors. So if you want to stalk somebody or you want to see if you're getting stalked, somebody's watching you. You might as well watch (laughs) them. Spy Associates will have a code, the same thing, 20% off any order over $249. So there you go. Read, eat, have sex. And spy on somebody. Yep. So there we go. <laughs> Isabella, I'm uh, so glad you're on the show. I've so I've seen you in the clubs. I know you've probably seen me in the clubs. I lurk around. Yeah, you look so, familiar. Yes. Yeah, so everybody does. But <laughs> I, when I heard about golf speed dating, I'm like, wow, that is for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, for, 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 first off, uh, how did you? Uh, how did you? L- l- let's start. Let's backtrack. Yeah. What, how do you define goth? And we'll ask Nicole how she defines it. Oh. Hmm. Um. Just for our non-goth listeners, because everybody's got a different opinion of what is goth. They do. And, and what's your can, opinion? It can get a little contentious in my group, I think, because everybody has their own opinion on it. So right. I would rather not be. <laughs> no, but what what, 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 no, but, but the, the, what, you, what you think is goth doesn't invalidate what other people think is goth. What do you think is goth? Um, how did you get in the scene? Uh, how did I get in the scene? Actually, it was music. Music, um, you know, music is kind of what pulled me into the scene. Uh, specific, specifically what music? Like industrial. I'm a okay. huge industrial fan. Okay. Yeah, so, All right. Yeah. Was there one song that, like, you're like, oh, wow. Um, not really. I mean, I kind of just really got into Skinny Puppy, and then I wanted to hear more. Yeah. You know? I, That's kind of a starting point, and kind of just got sucked in that way, and kind of just became a way of life, and everything yeah it was my world after a while that was it so, yeah, yeah. I, I i can relate nicole do you have a similar story i was gonna say music is definitely what makes you goth it starts with music and then there's the fashion element to it mm-hmm. yes and then it's just overall the way we all kind of look at the world like it's really messed up but that's kind of okay as long as you have your music right do you consider yourself goth i think about this a lot <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not a traditional goth. I consider myself more artistic, but definitely mm-hmm. I lean toward the dark side. Right. I mean, you are in the goth scene. People know you in yeah. the goth scene. But, but you, you straddle a lot of scenes. Yeah. I, I would say I am, right now, I have my fashion sense is goth bohemian. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm goth. I just... I've, I, the arts, the art part of goth has a stronger hold on me than the fashion part or the music part. Right, right, mm-hmm. uh, and because uh, uh, I think uh, I think uh, Nicole has she has goth uh, goth clothes. She has the goth fetish. She can goth it up if she wants to, but doesn't always do that. Mm. Well, that's still goth, right? I think so. I mean, yeah. It's not like I'm a closet goth. I mean, I wrote some fucked up shit. Yeah. It's a state of mind, that's yeah. for sure. That's it's an I mean. attitude. It's, it's a lifestyle. So it's not just like, you know, what you put on. Well, I don't want to wear but... the heavy stuff all the time. It depends. I like to blend in with wherever I'm going. But mm-hmm. 
this is my trademark, so I kind of always have dark, dark heavy eyeliner on, even if I'm uh, in Beverly Hills. <laughs> okay, well. I just don't go full goth. Right, right. Well, I mean, to us, that's not heavy eyeliner. Oh, You're I pointing know. it out, like, that's, I know, dude, that's, that's nothing. But yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> that's what, it's the Joan Jett look isn't what you wear yeah. at Beverly so, Hills, typically. It's a little smoky for Beverly Hills, but yes. it's not as Beverly Hills. <laughs> well, Beverly Hills used to have a vampire uh, club out there. They oh, to, did they really? Oh, you don't remember don't that? Don't they still have it? it? No, it was, it was closed. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to get to that, too. So, uh, yeah, no, they had, a, it was, when I, uh, 2017, I got, I moved back to L, uh, L.A., and they had a, like, vampire, it's a little small club, and they used to have, people used to play vampire the game, and they used to have nights, and it was a, a vampire club right in the middle of uh, Beverly Hills, but... I went there one night, and then they closed it, like, uh, a month later. I don't know, but uh, oh. interesting. So, uh, but but you, I thought, so you were born in L.A., you were born in L.A., is that correct, or Alhambra? No, actually, I was born in Africa. I was oh, born, okay. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I was born in uh, West Africa and Ivory Coast, and then my family relocated here in, um, like, 1985, and we've been here ever since. And oh, wow. I spent about 10 years in Seattle and then moved back a couple years ago, and... At the time, it was just like, oh, my God, I don't know anybody here. It's been, I've been gone for so long. And right. I just started going to all the goth clubs on my own because I really missed the Mercury, which is kind of like the center, <sighs> the center of the goth scene in Seattle. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I started just come, you know, going to all the different clubs here again. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is great. It just kind of like, you know, filled up my universe. Because, and- you, you know, Gothic Beauty magazine said mm-hmm. this is the number one goth scene in, in the world. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with that? Um, I guess if you don't count Germany, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've got to try. Oh, wait, wait, it's like uh, sort like, of like the holy mecca. No, it wasn't. No, it's in the United States, not not, not the world. So I guess, uh, yeah, which is weird because you wouldn't think L.A. would be the place for the the number one goth scene. Hmm. But where in Africa were you? Um, Abidjan. I was born in the the capital of Ivory Coast. Oh wow! Yeah. That's cra- that's crazy. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird, but yeah, I'm African. Well, well, uh, okay, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> of course. But uh, yeah, well, what did your parents do? Were they like, you know, were they? Well, my dad was. Um, he was working for the Taiwanese government. He was doing some kind of like. Di- uh, he was like a diplomat. Okay. So they were like traveling through Africa. My my brother was born in Senegal. Okay. Um, which is also West Africa. So, right. Yeah. So that's so so weird. I know, it's super weird. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, though, if you like, just in terms of like, you know, if you're really into like astrology, you know, because where you're born is kind of a big deal, so. Is it really? Yeah. For your birth chart, yeah. Yeah, for your birth chart, yeah. But it's weird. I, I, so. I, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn. I, I don't know what that means. I can teach you. Oh, please. <laughs> please. So, so, you, so they went from Africa to, to Washington? No, they actually, I mean, we moved here to L.A. Okay. All my family's pretty much, they've all been here in L.A. ever since. Okay. And then, you know, I, I was raised in L.A. and then. Um, in my mid thirties, I moved to Seattle for graduate school and was out there for ten years, and then I okay. moved back. So. Oh, that was uh, I was gonna say that was two years in the future, but because uh, you're not your mid thirties was a couple years ago. No, well, uh, probably like the last, probably last within the last ten years. I'm trying yeah. because you, you, you look, you look. I, I was, I was at like twenty twenty nine. No, know. I'm gonna be forty in April. Oh, good for you. Yeah, <laughs> no, trust me. I, I, yeah, I just it's 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 a rough one. I just did that much. You time. don't look it. You oh, definitely well, thank don't. You, you definitely don't. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just hit that one too. It's it's, it's, it's when they hit. You when also they, don't look at. Mine. Yeah, when, when well, that's the goth thing, you know. We're, we're preserved. We're embalmed. We're, we're but, embalmed. Uh, that's great. But, well, yeah, when they well, the ones with the zeros on the end, those are rough. But uh, so but the only time when I went to Seattle, I did some shows there, and this is a long time ago. Uh, so I, maybe this is way outdated. But I went to Club Knock Knock. Hmm. I guess that, I guess they closed that one. Yeah, I wasn't there when that one. It was, it was yeah, it was N O C N O C. And uh, well, it was interesting because like uh, I got there and like I was staying like way out, so I got there early and they were, it was like a bar where they were having a happy hour. And I was wearing a dark suit and like these dudes were calling me senator because I was the only one wearing a, a suit. And then <laughs> like I was waiting for the whole golf club to start, so it was kind of a transition from like a happy hour. To an unhappy hour with the, with the, with the club <laughs> knock knock people, but it was fun. Yeah, I just uh, I would I when I went to Seattle, I was like, I, there's more here than I'm than I'm seeing, and uh, there's a whole scene. I was only there for a few days, and I was doing shows, so I didn't get to see it all. Yeah, but, you um, know. I don't think I'm sad enough to be a goth. There's a we don't we, we don't. <laughs> there's been some that. tragedy in your life. Yeah, but there's an attitude to being goth as well. Sort of ennui at the very least. A sort of general dissatisfaction with life. I don't get that from Isabel. 
I deal with like I don't know I don't know if I should publicly admit this, but I deal with existential dread. But that's just me. Really? Yeah. Mm. Kind of eats away at me, but uh, the scene makes it better. It's a way for me to kind of get that out of my system. Well, that's I what I. That's why. That's what I mean. Community. It it mean it, yeah. yeah, the community means a lot to me for that reason. Well, that's what I've always said because people tell people tell me they're like you're too happy being off, but I. Some of the happiest people I know are in the goth scene because they get to let it out. Yeah, I they think get to that's embrace it their is. darkness. It feels good to be around other goths. I mean, for me, it just feels like ah, oh, this is like my my family, kind of like mm. a twisted family. But right, it's a small scene in my opinion. You kind of like know of somebody, of somebody, of somebody. You know, you're always sure. running into people. Like, yeah, well, especially uh, you you know you're doing this goth speed dating and you're the goth dating Facebook. <laughs> so uh, so so we're gonna get into the dating right now now because. <laughs> Now, for, now, here's the thing. Now, I didn't go to the goth. I, I actually had tickets for the second goth speed dating when it was they canceled. Oh yeah, I canceled it. Yeah, because I was so. And why did you cancel it? Uh, it had to do with the venue. We were yeah. dealing with some venue issues, and right, uh, right now I'm kind of just at my leisure. I'm just looking for a new venue, and you know I'm not in a rush or anything. But, but from what I was looking at on the first goth speed dating, because I was curious, yeah, is that every post I was saying is like. I met some cool people, but nobody I connected with romantically. Yeah, yeah. I saw that post a lot. That was actually the number one thing that happened. But what was kind of cool is that everybody kind of, it just seemed to launch a little, like, community because after that you had so many people that were just kind of hanging out. Basically, you had so many people automatically friend-zoned. You had a whole new community of friends. You did, you did. But that's <laughs> oh, not great, that's all I need. Part. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. People, as I always say, people, when it, when it comes to finding a significant other, it's, it could, it's usually somebody who's, you know, friends with somebody you know. No. Exactly. That's what I always say to absolutely, people. Absolutely not. I say to the people in my group, like, stop being, like, you know, so single-minded about this. Like, you know, it's not just like a, like, let me post a personals ad. Like, you're right. actually here to make friends. Treat it like a social club or something yeah. because. And the group she's talking about is uh, Goth Date LA. What is it? Oh, no, it's called SoCal Gothic Dating. There you go. So. SoCal Gothic Dating. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't mean to disagree with you and, and interject, but uh, I, I, from a male perspective, being the only male here, mm -hmm. no, that's not right. What do you mean? <laughs> What's not right? No, so you, uh, think of a, uh, and I know you have plenty of them. Yeah, tons. And I know Nicole has probably <laughs> just as many, if not more. Think of a man that is like a, your best friend. Somebody you call every day, somebody you dump your problems on, somebody that's always there for you. He's so in love with you. He so wants to go out with you. Go oh, give me that. I don't put oh, that nice that's guy that's bullshit on no, me. No, no, it's, tr it's absolutely true. <laughs> it's absolutely true, and you put him in the friend zone. That is so not true. That's absolutely true. 100% true. <laughs> I don't even know who it is, but I just saw your face like, oh, no, I'm not into him. Like, no, hey. that's not even it. I'm really... Direct, like I. Tell oh, I know you, you are. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you right away. Look, the, Nicole's a good friend because she's actually told me on more than one occasion, I don't want to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I will never fuck you. And yes, and so she's. And, uh, I say you're not for me, but I'll help you find someone that's for you. That's no, usually no, what I do. No, you don't say that. But you said. You said, I, you said I no. I said, it would, I, is, isn't you, that what I do? I think it's exactly you know, what I think I do. you're the one person that actually does that, but. Uh, <laughs> But you, I don't think you've ever actually uh, said that out loud. But you have said, no, I will not have sex with you on more than one occasion, which is <laughs> very helpful. I wish most of my friends would say that. And then, uh, okay, all right. But yeah. does that mean you're just friends with a woman so you can kind of like kind of weasel in if there is a chance? I no, mean, no, well, well, happened, well first, first off, I, no, no. I don't, I'm, I think I, it's very <laughs> rare that people date friends. I think it's. I agree with you. Either you treat your friends different than you treat the people you're romantically interested well, in. Well, yeah, I think it's there's kind of this asexual, I don't know, like I, I like I went on like a date friends. with this guy, and halfway through the date, I'm like, we have absolutely no chemistry, but he'll make a wonderful friend. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, are these yeah. the dates that you're going on to? What well, what's happening is that like sometimes it's a case where there's even chemistry for me, but I just feel like it's better that we're friends because we not be we. It would just be, you know, a mess if we were involved. Like, for example, there's just something about... Well, yeah, that's kinda... also with the goth scene, too. It's, uh, I could see that it could be, uh, an, it could end up being a mess because there's so much judgments and other stuff. Uh, the interesting thing about the goth scene is people are so paying attention constantly to who's doing what. Hmm. And, uh, well, and also, I, um... That's that's not uh, unique to the goth scene, but I think it's. Uh, Somebody said it was incestuous. No, no, like well, you know, so and so dated so and so well, well, way back. <laughs> well, that's what that's what I was getting at is that uh, it, you know it's it's true of the goth scene, but it's true uh, in Hollywood in general because 
Uh, 10% of the guys are dating 90% of the women. <laughs> it's the same guys hopping around from woman to that woman. That sounds like such... So, the, 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 they sound so whorish when you put it that way. But <laughs> they are whores. They're man <laughs> yeah, whores. They are. They're whores. Yes, they're man <laughs> whores. And they're the ones that get it. They're getting asked. Meanwhile, the guy... The guy that's there for you, and I don't know his name. And I'm just, <laughs> he no. so digs you. Oh, no. yes, he's so, oh yeah, yeah. I got a buddy. His name is Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. Gabriel does, so wants you. No, he doesn't want yeah. me at all. Is he I'll heterosexual? Say, yeah, he's totally heterosexual. That, 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 he want, that, that he wants you. No, he does not. He, that would That's disgusting. I no, no, that's disgusting to you. No, to him, too. He'll no, tell me. No, He'll you're, literally you're say. You're a beautiful woman. I recently <laughs> almost crossed the line with a friend. And then I had to stop myself because it's really true. You just you're actually genuinely afraid of ruining the friendship because once things go, how would that mind, ruin the friendship? Because I'm I'm probably going to dump you. Sometimes it's just way worse. But don't be dating. still be a friend. What's the, what's the problem? You can't be friends after you have first been friends, then had sex, then you get dumped. You can't be friends because I'm friends. I'm friends with most of my my ex girlfriends. I actually you think, aren't an ex girlfriend though if you do it that way. Well, I'm not. You're an literally anyway, a friend but, you know. that you just. Sh- crush their whole existence it, it it's messy you know no it gets messy it totally gets messy right. but for me it's just I, I will not date somebody even if there's chemistry because there may be other issues like you know they may have a child oh, yeah. I don't want oh, sure, to date yeah. somebody no, with it. a child they may live too far away they may yeah <laughs> or they're at a different yeah. point in their life you know or somebody like you know it's just there's just a host of different reasons why I wouldn't date them even though it's like there's chemistry you know so why not try why not give it a date because I just, for example, we already think, know it won't work. Yeah, it won't work. It just won't work. Maybe it will. And I, if no. I'm, what I'm thinking about a friend, I, and I'm already thinking about if I'm going to dump them, which I know I am. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know me. <laughs> then I really don't want to put my friend through all that. Well, I actually, um, and I just met you, and I'm, I'm very charmed by you already, but I would not date you, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why some girls have given me the excuse that they wouldn't date me because they don't want to end up as one of my jokes. Which I tell them, and it's true. If I was to do a joke about you, and I've done this for women I've dated, I would ask your permission first before I would That's do it. That's very nice of you. Uh, but you posted on some day, a date that you had not too long ago. Oh, God. Which one was that? Don't make me talk about it publicly. The guy, well, you posted on Facebook publicly. That's why yeah, I read it. Well, I don't, what, what, the guy with the jeans. The guy with the, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I didn't see this post. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody had the nerve. <laughs> Like to date Isabel and wear Wait. jeans. I hate it, denim too. I, yeah, but it wasn't really just do. like jeans. They were like faded blue jeans. But here's the thing: if you're a guy, <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second. Wait, so what, what's the what's the like if you like, are, are there acceptable jeans or no? You're right. You're totally not compatible with this person. <laughs> She doesn't even need to ask me questions. If you consider yourself a goth guy and you're you're about to go out with a woman that's a goth woman, it's like, you know, you show up in blue jeans and you look like a Tinder guy, false advertising. This is bullshit. Where'd you meet him? him? He he found me through my dating group, messaged me, and then I agreed to meet him. Okay, so it was basically uh, one one step above a Tinder date. That's what I mean. And I find myself on a date with a Tinder guy. Like... (laughs) It's like, what the shit is this fuck? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, I hate Tinder. What did I sign no, wait, up wait, 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 for? Wait, 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 here's, here's the thing. I may as well go to Tinder or swiping around and step outside of my community. You well, know? I, 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 I'm going to get to that too, but uh, it was a, a, day, a daytime date, was, not, was it not? From yeah, it was. Yeah. So what, what was he supposed to wear? Black. <laughs> Okay. I mean, at, at at a minimal, I mean, at at minimum, you should at least be like, you know what I mean. And you got to look at it from. Our I hate perspective. to be the goth police, but like, and that's what people right. say. And when you're dressed like that, and we know we're not going to date you then, because you stand against everything that we would normally date. I don't care if a woman showed up with jeans. I would. I. I I would, okay, I would. I, I think that's woman... bullshit. How would you feel if you were all excited? You're going out with a woman that's goth. And then you show up, and she looks like she's no, no. Mark would like, just be excited to be going out with her. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, no comment on that. But uh, no, 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 I, I, no I, honestly, I, I know Mark would. Well, I, and here's the odd thing: I've actually dated probably more non-goths than goths. Although every woman under the age of, I would say, forty-five has had a goth phase. So there's a, a whole thing. But if somebody showed up and they were supposed to be goth, and they showed up and we were supposed to be at a coffee shop during the day, and she wore jeans, I wouldn't hold it against her. I would just see what, how, how it went if we ride. These but, are red flags, though, that mark a, they mark people and let you know. Blue jean flags. Yeah, it's like you're not compatible. It's just women are constantly 
you know how it's the the statement that a woman knows in the first five minutes whether or not she'll sleep with a man. Yeah, right. you we know. play the whole relationship out from beginning to end before we even say yes to a date. Ex- yeah, like I mean, just based on what we're we know looking of you. For, I, again. Like for am me, I going to yeah. dump you? No, I look at it like: Does he have a career? Is he ambitious? Is he educated? Where is he on that? And then it's like from there. Well, wait, was he goth first? Oh well, yeah, is he goth? And okay, so me, it's, and she needs that because look at her; like her whole life is built around this. She can't just be going out with blue jeans. I, I do, I do <laughs> go out with the occasional normie, and yeah. when I go into that, I know what I, what to expect. But if I'm going yeah. out with a guy from my dating group, I'm going to have certain expectations in place. Right. So if I show up and he didn't put any effort, right. then I'm going to feel like. Again, it's like false advertising. And he can have components as a person that make him goth, right? Like the, the, the sensibilities or mm-hmm. like the, the attitude. But it's like, it, you know. No I, goth owns faded blue jeans. <laughs> it's like you're, it's the first date, you know. You want to put your best foot forward. And they you own know what? Black it, jeans it, doesn't require, it doesn't require you to spend a lot of money. It has nothing to do, do with being formal. So you can meet at a coffee shop, be wearing black jeans and a black shirt. Some okay, so black jeans shirt. are okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, just don't show up in just, faded I'm blue jeans and Birkenstocks or something. Oh, wait, you know wait, what I mean? wait, 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 you didn't tell me that. Or a Hawaiian wait, 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 shirt. Wait, 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 I absolutely could Bir- not stand Hawaiian shirts. Was he wearing shirts. Birkenstocks too? I've dated uh, someone with a Hawaiian shirt before, but he was a club promoter. Oh, uh, those are unforgivable. <laughs> I, can't I, I, I would, I, the Hawaiian shirt and the Birkenstocks, you get a point. <laughs> that's like, that's the blue like jeans, the if there's everything else, like, I, I, for me, I would say, if the guy was wearing like Docs or Creepers, he had blue jeans and he had the dark shirt on. I think he passes. Blue jeans aren't goth. All right, they're well, just not goth. All right, I can't all right deal anyway, with it. anyway, okay. Just... But he was also he was also obese. You said, and you posted that too. Oh uh, yeah, I know. I hope he doesn't ever hear this. I'm no, please. Feel yeah, really bad. Well, from one, yes, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I wouldn't date you because uh, uh, I would get the whole review on Facebook. Uh, like, <laughs> I, and by, no, by, by, by the way, that's supposed to be a restriction. By the way, that was, you are not and supposed to way, read that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't on the that wasn't uh, that was on your page. I don't think that was on the, the dating form. That was on your no, page. No, no, no. I would never show that publicly. I mean I'm not I think I'm, it was I'm not I'm not proud of that issue because it's like, you know, I do have some standards there. I mean it's not like I'm in shape. I mean I constantly refer to myself as pudgy. Oh, it's stop. just that I, well, it, I just can't I'm just not attracted to someone who's you know what I mean? It's just it was too yeah. much. I couldn't deal with it. Okay, I'll it see was, I'll, I'll I'll see you later. No, I, <laughs> no, but, no, no it's no, not no. like that. No, but it was the thing is uh um, but I'm going to die from embarrassment because I feel like, you know, it's, uh, but but yeah, so I, the thing is I don't want I don't want I don't want the date review to be on Facebook. That's the thing. It was supposed to be just on my good friends. I don't know. I, I guess I'm one of your good friends, but no, how I many people I, are on SoCal goth dating? Uh, my group has roughly I think the last time I checked, we were like at 850 or 860 people. Okay, so you show this uh, to about 800. No, people I, that's it's not for anybody. Nobody can read that from my group. It's I, just, I read it. No, it's it. That's my fi- personal profile. Right. You must be on there by accident. Or I usually have private. <laughs> have private not, not for long. No, no, no. Is it like I have privacy settings? That's just the kind of stuff you share with your close friends. So okay. I'm a little embarrassed. This is coming out right now. I just now. came up my newsfeed. Uh, 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 years, uh, about a weeks ago, I'm like, what? <laughs> I was but, that, but that's a double standard. This is why part of the reason I love the goth scene. I'm attracted to the goth scene why? because it, fe- it because curvy women are very fetishized in the goth scene. Are very encouraged. It's oh true. Well, well, there's there is the whole like big titty goth girl friend. Well, no, there's like, no, 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 no curves in general. Like curves, my, yeah. my big butt. Yeah. Cur- no curves in general. Uh, it, it's. Uh, it, it, it's uh, accept, not only accepted, but, see, but it's adored is, in the gossip. See, I, yeah. l- I like women too, and I actually prefer yeah. women that are on the heavier side. I like. Okay. Like, There's a double standard. I like voluptuous. Always. No, it's not a double standard. It's always double standard. There's a certain. I don't know. I, Mark I, is saying that male curves aren't rewarded at the same way. <laughs> the female curves. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely I don't saying. need a muscle head. I don't need somebody who like goes to the fucking gym like five, six days a week. It's just... No, no you, want, you want the skinny hurts. goth guy. No, actually I don't. You want, I, you I, want I, the I, Marilyn Manson, Peter Perfy. You got no, the, uh, I've stopped. You want the this, Sandman. You this want is those so guys. not cool that you brought this up because here's the thing. It's like I've dated people of like all shapes and sizes. It's yeah. just that I can't... That was just too much. No, no. He had movies on. He's an asshole. But I'm just saying... what? The oh. blue jeans are the fucking <laughs> asshole. It's not God. But I was going to say, I don't date the skinny guy anymore because I agree. The skinny guy is one of the 10% that's screwing all the women. Yes. <laughs> but There's see, only so many skinny guys in Hollywood. But but also, you tell me why. Tell, tell Isabel and myself why 
You're like a little chubbier guy now. Oh, because I want to be able to eat whatever I want. Yeah. She she told me recently, she's like, I like chubbier guys because mm-hmm. t- we can go out and I can eat whatever I want. <laughs> when I'm out with really skinny guys, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm careful what First I eat. First off, really skinny guys don't eat. It's yeah. really a problem. Hmm. They don't eat, like, at all, and I don't know what to do with that because I like to eat a lot. But see, I don't find that attractive either, so it's yeah. like you, you have the wrong impression. It's okay. just that there's a certain... But it, with the regards to the 10% of men in Hollywood that are dating uh-huh. the 90% of women, they are the skinny goth guys. Like, we all know who they are, and they're single, and they are kind of whores, but, I mean, it's like Candyland for men. They can go out, and there's, like, five different women they could pick in one day. It's easy for them. Is that really the case? Yeah, it is. It's well. That's why it's incestuous because there's only so many people. Yes. There's new girls all the time, but the guys there aren't that many new guys. I don't mm. think I can think of new, new goth guys. I'm trying to think. Yeah, um, I I haven't been paying attention. I mean, there's always there's a couple that pop up, I guess. But no, the, the um, my YouTube uh, page exponentially the number one video and the number two video are my videos from the BBW Con. The BBW convention, large women. Mm-hmm. I have like three hundred thousand <clears throat> views of those. There's no BBM convention. Oh. Large men. But I I, I want to get off the subject because it, it's it's fine. Uh, I but I just I, I that's why I wouldn't date you because I wouldn't what? want the review on so so called goth. It's not. I keep saying that was like personal page. I mean, I don't even know how this came up, but yeah, it's, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass it, you. I'm absolutely horrified right now. I, I know. I would not want this in a public. Context at all. Okay. So why let's, let's don't let's women that. like bears? No, no, forget but it. But here's the thing, though. I have dated men that are, like, larger. I mean, I think you got the wrong idea. It's okay. just that no, no, obesity is a separate... I got it. No, this guy, this guy, this guy failed on all levels. It was just obesity. I can't... Yeah, he, he, he failed on all levels. But it, it's kind of like, you know, I have my own personal preferences. I shouldn't have to... No, you, you're them. fine. <laughs> no, you, you're totally fine. Don't absolutely, worry about no, absolutely it. I agree fine. with you. Absolutely fine. Let me, let me. I'm trying. I'm trying my best to move on to the to the next thing. And so I can't date. You, I do like ones that are chubbier, but I can't date someone that's unhealthy. Right. It's that's, unhealthy. That's what it's it bad was. for me. Right. That's what it was. I mean, it wasn't like I was like sitting around going, "Oh my god," you know. I don't do like I don't fat shame. How or, did How did you come up with goth speed dating? How did this brilliant idea come to your head? Uh, I was seeing somebody was, you know, absolute mad puppy love. And one day he dumped me and left me crying and devastated and just a total mess. And then as I started assessing my life and my situation, you know, I was like, I have so much going for me. I've worked so hard on myself. And then this person just discarded me. It's like, what do I do now? It's like, well, I've been waiting for a really long time to meet somebody I can click with, but I've been... I'm not meeting people in the club scene. And I was like, what's what's really the issue here? Like, I'm, I'm not connecting with my community in a way where I feel like I'm able to, you know, meaning just as a single goth woman. Right. You why, know? Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think that was? You know, it's kind of interesting. I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. I think goth people can be really kind of maladjusted. So it's like when we come together, we're super happy to be around each other, but we're, we're still kind of maladjusted. Right. That's just my theory. So, you know, you have a club. Yeah situation where we're all dancing and having fun and we mm-hmm. might talk but it's like I don't know in terms of just like hooking up I mean it does happen right but sure. it just I felt like there had to be other avenues for us to connect and then that's when I was like there's got to be other people out there that feel like me so mm-hmm. I thought about it and I wanted to go to I thought okay a Tinder I, I fucking hate Tinder I hate I'm yeah. sorry I don't mean to curse you probably have to bleep no no, 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 no. It's, uh, we encourage profanity oh okay I we hated, encourage profanity I hated all the dating apps I've been on them for years you know I the, the, wasn't meeting anybody mostly they were just normies is I there just, a goth dating app Actually, that's yeah. something I didn't want to really talk about, but I am actually looking into developing one. That'd be awesome. There has, the there has, there ha- there has been a w- in the past. There are goth dating sites. They're, they're, they are, but there's nothing that makes them goth. Like, right. literally, it's just kind of like, hi, we're, we're here for you as a gothic person, like gothic match. Like, I went on there, right, and it was right. absolutely disappointing. But from my experiences, um, I, I'd like to actually all f- like funnel that into creating a gothic date, like a goth dating app. Right, that'd be great. Um, so that's kind of my goal this year. But anyway, but I mean, in terms of the speed dating, I thought, oh, maybe I'll look into a speed dating, you know, just the mm-hmm. hell of it is. I was going through the grief of that relationship, you mm-hmm. know, ending, and I was like, damn, what would I even wear to this thing? It's like Clifton's, and I can't show up in like my combat boots and like my fishnets. I mean, yes. I don't really have anything Why to wear. Why not? Uh, I was, I just didn't feel right. It just felt horrible. Like, I just, meaning I was going to be myself, but it just would have been strange being there. Strange. 
It would be being yourself in an unwelcome feeling. Like you would feel like you just didn't belong and you don't need that. Yeah. So then I was like, wait, is there gothic speed dating? So I kind of Googled it. I'm like, wait, nobody's doing gothic speed dating. What is this? And I'm like, wait a minute. Why don't I just do it myself? And then I kind of just threw, uh, channeled all my grief into the whole gothic speed dating thing, you know, finding a venue, setting that up, creating the, just the branding for that. And then I created the Facebook group because I thought there wasn't one. And then, then I came up with the idea of the cemetery picnics that were based yeah. on the Victorian pastime yeah. of great. picnicking in cemeteries. And then I, everything just went viral when people just started joining my group. I got like 90 ads every week. That's great. And everybody that I knew from the club scene just landed in my group. And now it's just this huge you know, thing. It's a community. Yeah, it's turned you, into a you, community. You've built a community. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the picnics are what really seems to drive sort of the right the community itself because people drop in and it just it turns into one big thing at the right. at Odd Fellows and that took a lot of work in terms of finding mm-hmm. a cemetery that would accept us and right. let us picnic and you know not not you know with their permission and that sort of thing yeah, there's and a little swap meet and stuff yeah i mean i i went with hollywood forever the first time and it kind of started yeah. this way. i was like oh maybe we'll get like 20 or 30 people that show up if we do i'll be happy and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. i look at my event listing and there's like 3,000 people going or interested <laughs> i was like oh my god okay i cannot be the face of this this is a liability waiting to happen and then right. i would contacted their event coordinator and they just blew me off and went a thousand dollars so right. Yeah. If so, you want to throw something, uh, you should try St. Felix. St. Felix. On Coenga and mm-hmm. Selma. Okay. I'll look into They're, that. I'm still looking at venues. I've been talking to several, and they all just, you know, it has to do with how much money they want. But um, I'd like to do my they next might, meeting, but uh, We do a good job having goth events there, goth mm-hmm. and rock bands. Mm-hmm. So it's... Okay. St. Felix is actually my favorite bar in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Oh, so okay. I would go in and I talk to John. Oh, okay. He owns the place. And, That's yeah. uh, Lenora Claire used to do a goth hip hop brunch there. Yeah. And I don't think you have to put down money as long as you can bring people. Oh, okay. That's really nice. At Very least nice. I don't think Lenora Claire was paying anybody for that. I don't know. Yeah, think, yeah. So. Okay. I'll talk to them and see what happens. But um, so, how's it, I mean, how's it feel that you've. There's this vacuum, and you filled it. Um, well, I've and just, you are the face of it. <clears throat> well, I've just dis- I've discovered that there are so many people in our scene that do not want to go to a club because, for various reasons, they're they're just not into it. You know, they don't want to go clubbing, which is totally fine. So right. they they're now filling that vacuum. So you know, our meetups are like you know, again, I think I got like 70, 80 people at one of our picnics. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, we started doing like a clothing swap as well, kind of, right. made it, and that kind of forced people out of their shells. So instead mm-hmm. of kind of sitting around with your friends, all huddled up, right. eating sandwiches, checking somebody out in the corner, being kind of weird and creepy about <laughs> it, not talking to them. Now it's yeah. like, whoa, what is that? That's a cool shirt. And then you end up talking with somebody who's friends with that cutie. Mm-hmm. And then you, you guys end up talking. So I've had like probably at least 10 couples like privately approach me and thank me and say, That's Hey, great. I met so-and-so through your group or at your meetup and, so, like, the, so the meetup. Uh, I, I'm actually, madly in love with her. Blah blah blah. That's you great. Know? So the meetup actually, which is not necessarily uh, you know uh, a, um, a singles event, mm-hmm. uh, had more couples than maybe speed dating. No, actually, I actually um, the meetups, the the picnic meetups are actually singles events. Okay. Yeah, it's just that couples still show up because you know we're also obviously open to like polyamorous couples and you know right. anybody who wants to basically use that atmosphere to like meet new people and right. network. So yeah, but the picnics. Because I know like, a couple people that showed up that weren't a couple. They, yeah, they it, just it's actually it's want to check out the the, the the whole scene. It's supposed to be for singles actually, right. so it's for people that are not coupled up. Right. But we get couples as well. So right. yeah, but it's kind of cool now because it's turned into a communal potluck where everybody's feeding each other at these mm-hmm. picnics and. Right. And it actually kind of drives me nuts when people say to me, like, well, why don't you just do it at a park? And I'm like, there it was an actual, like, pastime of, like, picnicking in cemeteries in right. Victorian times because people were so much more comfortable with death. You know, your loved one would die. Yeah. You put them in the parlor, take pictures. Let me guess. <laughs> uh, I, I, and you just bury them and go see them once a week or every couple of days. Was you the know? person goth that said that? Come on. Who? Whoever said why are you do it in the cemetery? It's goth. No, I actually got a lot of I got a lot of complaints from people. As, they were just kind of like, "Why don't you just?" This is when I was still looking for a home for the cemetery right. for the picnics because Hollywood Forever wouldn't let us do our picnic there. Right. They're like, "Why don't you just do it at a park?" Or I was like, "No, you don't get it. This actually has a historical basis." Sure. Yeah. And yeah, was, they were all goth people, so I don't think they really kind of dug into the history. You right. Know? That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah. Well, you know, you got you got to teach these people. It's yeah. The whole cemetery, the whole the vibe in the cemetery is a whole thing there. Yeah, yeah, and and we know we we're we're pretty lucky because you have a mausoleum, so there's like a electrical source. You don't even need a generator. We can just yeah. set up like you know have somebody DJ and stuff. So yeah. I'm trying to attract more people. That it are... is very goth to be DJing in the mausoleum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, the first picnic, there was somebody that showed up with a grill. They asked me ahead of time if it was okay and. I was like, it should be okay, because I asked, you know, I, I met right. with the owners, and we talked about all the policies and procedures right. and stuff, but kind of just, I just sat there, like, just started laughing, and I laughed for, like, 10 minutes straight, because I could just picture him, this is before the, the picnic. The golf barbecue. Yeah, 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 yeah. he was, you know, pick, like, you know, grilling up body parts, or like, right. <laughs> like, some, like, some normal person walks by, they're like, what is this person doing? They're, like, grilling in the cemetery. Yeah. He's got an apron that says, kiss <laughs> oh, the man. golf, yeah, I, I can see, yeah. Yeah, dark. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, I can imagine you, you're there visiting your relatives that day. And it's like, <laughs> the hell's going on here? Yeah, this guy's this guy's barbecuing body parts. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I just started laughing. It just was so <laughs> ridiculous. I just absurd. I guess. Well, that's good. I mean, well, that's the thing. You're bringing. That's what that's what makes it interesting. Yeah. No. Well, he did show up and he grilled uh, hot dogs and he fed me and I was very mm. under. Uh, you know, I was very unprepared for my first picnic for myself because I was mm. running it. You know, so I was too busy kind of running myself ragged with it. But yeah, it was pretty amusing. The grill. Yeah. <laughs> How phallic. What? How phallic. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> here, here, have a hot dog. I know. I what kind of thing is that? Look at that. I'm still laughing about the grill. Well, that's great. <laughs> so, well, the next one's going to be on April 19th, the day before my birthday. So. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So people 420. Said, yeah. My birthday is 420. And uh, so people said they would bring some cakes and stuff. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> a lot of munchies. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Did you find a place to host it now? Yeah, so every all the picnics are at Oddfellows. And okay. we have already um, attracted like the local news. Um, we were on ABC Seven. That's so, right. Yeah, we, we're attracting a lot of attention. Well, what, what, cool. what was their reaction to it? Um, I don't. They seem pretty. I mean, they didn't really comment. They just kind of reported about, you know, yeah. here's the next picnic that's coming up, and they took some pictures from me that were taken that's at right. the last picnic. So, and did, wow, did nice. you did you did you think this is going to be this big? No, I did not. Like I said, when I said it at Hollywood Forever, I thought it was going to be like thirty people, twenty people. A hundred forever. When they, they when they do things there, they got they get a lot of people. I know. I really wish we could do it there, but I actually was quite sore with the way they they responded to me. It was very polite and professional, and they were very kind of you know sort of abrasive. And rude. I actually think it's like it's, they wanted to get rid of me. You know, I the see. attitude. In my personal opinion, I think it's better that you're doing it at Oddfellows. It is better because I, it's yeah. it, 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 there's so many things going on in Hollywood Forever. Yeah, it's almost a cliche to it do is. it at Hollywood Forever. True to do it at Oddfellows is, is is something unique. Well, East LA, I mean the the area. You know, I actually was thinking how if we actually, I would love to kind of go in the direction where we we run some type of festival or do something in the future. So yeah. I haven't really talked to the ownership, but my idea would be if we did do something like a festival or kind of turn the place into sort of like a Hollywood Forever, right? Kind of like in, in baby steps, it would rejuvenate the area and the local economy. So sure. I actually have high hopes for my relationship with the the cemetery. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me let me just ask you: uh, in the hierarchy of LA golf clubs, what is your favorite? Um. I would say like '90s Goth Club at the Lash. I don't know. Okay. That just makes me happy. The Lash is like my favorite place. The Lash. Okay. I would say Bar Sinister is really at the bottom. No, I, mean, I understand. It kind of no, drives me nuts, and people go, "Yeah, Bar Sinister." I'm like, they don't even play goth music like half the time, guys. Well, I mean, I, I have a I, different I, different place now. You know, I understand what you're saying, but yeah. I think I think uh, if somebody's new, they got to go once mm -hmm. to Bar Sinister just to okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody so should go it. to check it out just to say, "Hey, I, I went." Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's a spectacle. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, the lash I, has some cool nights going on. The lash is kind of, in my opinion, where some of the really good stuff is going on. Like it's right. shifting in that area. So that's the lash is close to where I live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's um, it was where when I because um, I left I left LA in um, 2015 and I moved back like uh, late 2017 2018. When I left in 2015, things were sort of over, kind of. Um, Kind of echo parky, like a lot mm -hmm. of stuff was happening, and like um, the uh, the uh, Los Lobos and El Cid and that type of area. But now it's like going 
uh, downtown, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, the Gosling's really it's, taking it's, off It's downtown. like migrating. Like, uh, it is. Yeah, it is. So I moved to Los Feliz. I was like, oh, I'll be right in the, right in the middle of it. And I'm like, eh, it's kind of shifting that way. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it's always a natural progression. It, um, and it, it never dies. Yeah. Why do you think Goth never dies? Mm, good question. I don't know. I, I mean, think it just a has a really it. strong community. Like, yeah. People are diehard goth. Like all the way, yeah. And then there's people that dabble in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you you're you're one of these people that like uh, they really they really need to enforce the dress code. If somebody comes in and they're not fully goth, you're like, you you gotta go. No, I mean, you know, it's not like you're gonna be like, no, you can't come in. You right. know, That's just because everybody like their first time. Is yeah, like, that's you know. like way too much. I mean, it's not like I'm like a gatekeeper. I mean, people give me that kind of uh, drama in my group all the time. They're like, well. There's like all these people in there. I don't even look goth, or like I messaged somebody, or I friend, you know, friend requested them, and they weren't even goth. I wore color to my first fetish ball. Yeah. And my attitude's like, what do you want me to do? Actual gatekeeping? How am I supposed to do that with a Facebook group? And right. plus, people have to start somewhere, right? So it's like, who am I to say you can't exactly. come into my Facebook group because you're not wearing all the stuff on your page? It's right. ridiculous, you know. So I'm very lax about. Letting pretty much everybody in, as long as they you know abide by the rules and that sort of thing. Right. But constantly comes up because people do message me say, "Hey, why are you letting these people in that aren't even goth?" Right. So there's a lot of elitism, and of course I'm kind of guilty of it too with the there blue jeans comment. There's definitely a lot of elitism. <laughs> with don't goth. worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but as, as far as the speed dating now, how what was the ratio for men to women? Uh, uh, so I made sure. I mean, it has to be split. So you know, it was right. like thirty. Uh, basically, um, well, it was more men than women signing up, right? It, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, th I mean, yeah, definitely there were more men than women in the beginning, and then I had to smooth that out, so I did kind of maybe, like, comp a few seats or something. But right. But that's okay. It's but, not, like, a big deal. I don't yeah. do it for money, so it's for fun. Not yet, but uh, I think the money is going to come to you. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, you're you're really developing a niche right here, and if uh, yeah. and if the app takes off, if the picnics take off, I mean – it, it, you may not plan this, but I think there's there's, yeah. there's definitely money to be made. Well, you know what's really funny is I've actually I don't really use it for dating for myself because it's just like a full time project for right. me. So, I, but I use it for like my my social you know yeah. circle and that sort of thing. And I've just made so so many amazing friends. And That's great. I it's just like I just remember it was like around Thanksgiving and a bunch of us got together through a little like Thanksgiving event. And I just was like, everybody kind of did like a toast at one point. Mm -hmm. Everybody said, you know, thank you to me. And I was like, well, look at all the good that came out of like a broken heart. That's because hilarious. that's actually that's what great. really started. That's, that's what pulled me out of like my grief and devastation was like kind of doing all these things that's that's the goth scene in a nutshell yeah and it was actually it's been really healing to see all these people get together and see how happy they are because for me it's like you know hey it didn't work out for me but it feels really good to see that these people it'll are work out for happy. you someday of course. at some point but that's yeah. not even like well, we, we, we'll, get, we'll get to that in, we'll get to that in a second but that to me is the goth scene in a nutshell this yeah. is what i try to explain to people it's take it's 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 taking your broken heart and your darkness and making something beautiful out of it. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's in fashion, that's in music, and that's in all all aspects. That's what that's what drew me to the scene. Hmm. Well, that and you know, I I followed a cute girl into a club, but then when I saw what was happening, I was mm -hmm. I was very intrigued. But so you say you don't you don't use it for your own dating. So how did where no, where, where, where do you meet the men and women that you date? Most of them are from like OK Cupid. OK and, Cupid. Yeah, I know. You're just like looking at me like what. I mean, I've never I, seen you on OKCupid. Okay I honestly. think when you I'm get the goth oh, wait, I think app. I think I did. I think I did. It's a small world goth. though, because a bunch of people that have messaged me in the last five years from OKCupid okay all ended up in my dating group, and we all just hung out and like my picnics. Right. So now we all know each other, and I, I, there's like no chemistry or whatever. But it, the point is that like now I have all these friends, and it's kind yeah. of funny because they're all people that like messaged me on OKCupid. Okay the sad, the sad thing about like, OKCupid okay and Match and all these other things. They're all Tinder now. It's all swipe left and stroke swipe right. I hate it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty uh, awful. Uh, yeah, but uh, okay, I, I I understand. But I mean, it's uh, uh, the other thing. Uh, you went to the vampire ball. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, because I we uh, I didn't go this year. We went. I went a couple of years ago when Nicole was uh, was with me. It was great. How was that? It was a blast. Is that I your first so one? No, no, I went last year because yeah. it was on 420. It was the I went to the Vegas one last year. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. It, was at, it was at the Globe or? Uh... Last year was like at the Artisan Hotel in Vegas. Oh, no, I love the Artisan Hotel. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I used to do shows out there, but. Oh, you mean the LA one last year? No, no, I used to do shows at the Artisan in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Uh, but 
the LA, where was it uh, this year, the LA one? Oh, uh, it was at the Globe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, just a really, pe- it was just a really elaborate affair, you know, just was absolutely, everybody was a stunning, exquisite costumes and just. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, you had to see the dress she was wearing. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but oh, wow. A couple years ago. But when you walk into, like, a, a, the Vampire Ball or these golf clubs, you're like royalty now, but people must come up to you and. <laughs> no, they don't do that. Yeah, I'm uh, just like, it's just a. Oh, face- thank you so much. It's I'm, just a Facebook group. It's just kind of nice though sometimes when people say, hey, well, I That's I, like I 900 people. A lot of people that probably haven't met you yet. But I do get a lot of people that run up to me at, like, clubs, like at Doss Bunker. They'll say, yeah. hey, you know, you're, I'm in your group. And I go, wait, wait, wait. I think I know because I try to keep track of everybody. Right. You know, right. I try to kind of, like, you know get to know every single member so even if they never have talked to me personally i, I kind of know who they are that's right. what i think and i kind of get wind of like who might like who and it's just there's so much gossip that kind of oh, like really? circulates oh, and, wait, and wait people second, message uh, me for, for advice and just it's just so amusing there's just so much going on with that group but it's just a facebook group has anybody mentioned that they like me Oh. No. Okay. So uh, I didn't think you were in my group anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, are you in the group? <laughs> oh, I'm in the group. So oh, I, you uh, are. No, I, I joined the group. I haven't. Oh, oh who's, who's in the call? Who's in the call? I don't think somebody. we're talking about that. <laughs> oh, I don't think I've ever really seen you post in there. I posted once, and I said hello to everybody. I haven't posted since. Oh, I got you. Oh, you got a bunch of replies. Yeah, it was a very popular post. Anyway, uh, cool. I didn't know Nicole that you did tarot card reading. I do. Is this a new thing? Is this? Uh, have you always had this? Or uh, I start. I've always been able to do it for myself. I started doing it for others a couple of years ago. Like my friend uh, Dan Santoni needed a tarot card reader for his group, and then I didn't. It was for uh, somebody's birthday, mm-hmm. and I brought in somebody that I had do my tarot readings when I wanted a second opinion. And then I was watching. I just decided I wanted to do it myself. Okay. So I do it for other people now, too. Okay, well. But I've always done it for myself since high school. Really? I, yeah. Now you tell me. Well, I don't walk around. I, I, I don't want to say So I'm you knew serious. my future this whole time. <laughs> you knew it was coming to this where you, I'd be sitting here with you and Isabel. That's not how they work. Okay. Tarot cards sort of set it up so that you get into a position of knowing where you are right now and seeing advice to how to get to where you want to be. Right. Well, I, t- I, I, I told Isabel that you could uh, give her a rating. She's very excited. If she wants one. That'd be cool. Okay. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be about love, but that would... Uh... It will be about whatever it's about. It's a misconception that, like, different cards don't even mean what people think. Like, death means transformation. The lover's card actually means more like a menage a trois. It yeah. means a choice has to be made. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, no, I, ha- I know how it works. Yeah. I have, like, well. a history with, like the occult and that sort of thing. So, so you probably do your own tarot readings. No, I never actually was very skilled at it. Like, I just didn't have an inclination for, you know, reading them. So I just kind of dabbled, but it didn't go very far. Yeah, she's shuffling the cards now. And that's one misconception with uh, when you date outside the goth scene. I dated a born-again Christian, and she was... Uh, I know, everybody, every, every guy's like, You would be Ew. shocked the amount of people that have been like, no, I believe in God. And I was like, so do I. <laughs> well, I, 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 it doesn't bother me. I don't, uh, you, but what, 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 people what, get weird about tarot. My whole, my whole thing with uh, religion, that's any religion, that's uh, anything from Satanism, to whatever, Buddhism, uh, Scientology, it works for you, great. Uh, you know, that's my personal opinion. So I didn't, I didn't pass any dispersions on her life, but she thought like every uh, goth guy, he was, Everybody in the goth scene was like Marilyn Manson and was this devil worshiper. Oh, actually, then, there are actually quite a few um, Christians uh, that are goth in my group, and sure. I support them as well. I mean, they started a thread on that, and it was interesting to see how people talked about their relationship with God. I'm not religious that way, but... Yeah, me neither, but uh, yeah, so that I was I totally was like, that's cool. You know, there's so much variety and diversity. Yeah. So I, I b- believe there's God, and then there's everything else. And I think I just leave people alone after that. Right. <laughs> well, I took her to a goth belly dancing festival, and she's like... I like these goths, but then there's that, and so it just didn't work out. But she was she was cool. Anyway, uh, I was just. But I get people when I talk to them online about tarot that are just seriously. They're like, I oh, no, I can't do that. I'm Christian. They won't even do a tarot reading. Okay, well, you'll do a tarot reading. I'll take four cards. Yeah, because I started doing my meetups with uh, people 
I uh, had a new Facebook, and mm-hmm. it ended up at 5,000 followers within oh the first gosh. two months. <gasps> That's crazy. And so I ended up trying to be like, well, I'll meet up with people if you guys want to come out, and I'll do a tarot reading, and then we can get to know each other. But a lot of the people that I would message about that, they were actually the religious ones, won't, t- won't touch it. Right. Yeah, that's very common, though. I was raised in a Christian household, and my brother thinks it's, you know, the devil. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Yeah. That's what I think about the blackjack decks in Las Vegas most of the time. Hmm. It's the devil conspiring against me. Okay. So here we have four cards, the Empress, Death, the Hermit, and Wheel of Fortune. You are going through a transformation right now. You're a very strong woman. Which is obvious. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't need cards for that. (laughs) I don't, I don't, okay. You are, but also you have feelings of you're very introverted and you're looking inside yourself right now for a lot of answers to things. And something is coming that will shake things up for you and hopefully you'll get more answers. But right now you're just going through a transformation process. That's what I see. I don't know what it is you're looking for, but I have a feeling you're going to find it. I definitely sense that you're looking for something. Love? Well, I'm, yeah, that's, you know. I don't, <laughs> I didn't see that in the cards. I okay. think it's something more profound. But it could be love. It's always possible that could be the thing that shakes you up. Perhaps you'll meet someone else who will challenge you. Hmm. Either that or you're going to date Vanna White. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> that's Wheel of Fortune. That's a joke. But no, I, uh, you don't see that this is a, a romantic thing. This is maybe, maybe this is a uh, the um, the, oh, goth, the goth dating thing. I was going to say, I think you've yeah, you've built something bigger than yourself. I think you're going to find the confidence you need, but something's coming. And an interesting choice of words, taking off. I really feel that with the wheel of fortune there. Hmm. Well, I think I. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not psychic, but I think uh, you've really uh, hit on something here. And you've been doing this for about, what, what, a year or so? Not even. It's been like seven months. Seven months. Yeah, I, I, just, like I, I said, it went viral and kind of exploded, you know. And that's great. It's yeah. changing who you are. That's what I'm seeing from the cards hmm. and who you're becoming. You're in the process of becoming somebody that you, I have a feeling you can be very proud of. Well, that's what I was saying. When, uh, when people come up to you in clubs and they know you from the dating site, is it sometimes uncomfortable because – it's not uncomfortable. It's just that I'm kind of an introvert. So right. it kind of happened at Das Bunker where there was like some, two, some people from my group and they wanted to do like kind of like a meetup type of thing, you know, like kind of run into each other and sure, say sure. hi. And yeah. I was just completely wasted and uh, I didn't recognize them mm-hmm. and they thought that I snubbed them. But the problem wow. is that I get so many people that actually come up to say hi to me now that I, right. I just can't keep track. And then when I'm completely wasted and you've got pounding, you know, bass and the lights, sure, and yeah. it's just like, you know, you're passing through a massive crowd. It's just it's really easy to be like, oh, I don't even recognize that person. Or, oh, they look kind of familiar. Do I know them? And then you're just kind of pulled in a different direction. I think you've accidentally become a figurehead and it'll be difficult for you to accept because I can get your introverted vibes off of you. Yeah. It actually causes fatigue. I actually didn't realize that I was that introverted until I started this whole thing and I was, I had I finished my first speed dating event and mm-hmm. the first picnic and... I just felt like I had just, you know, got out of, like, a, a deployment or something. Right. <laughs> you know, that's what it felt like. I just sat around, like, basically, like, like a zombie for days. I was so tired. Right. Like, mentally drained. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, I was like, am I really that introverted? I guess I am. But you're becoming a celebrity, so. <laughs> I don't want to think of it that way. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm being completely serious. <laughs> oh, God, that's weird. No, I don't you don't so. really get a choice in the matter. It's happening whether you <laughs> want it to or not. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, I, but, uh, and... You know, it's... Uh, well, the person I do talk to, actually, for advice is Noah Corda, the guy that runs... I don't know, sure, of course. Yeah, he's become kind of like, you know, I mean, when you, we haven't known each other very long, but he's kind of like, I really respect Noah's him and value yeah, him great, and yeah. as a friend, and uh, I've been kind of going to him for advice because he's been doing running events for so long. Well, so. He, he, came, he went through the same thing. He became... He started Bats Day. Yeah. And it became a, a just amazing, a viral sensation, just like what you were doing. 
So well, that's a good person to to know and and to uh, bounce things off of. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. He's kind of like my. I already said you're kind of like my mentor. Is what I say to him. He's just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And he has. He's a bit introverted himself. Mm. Are you are, when you get to really know him? Yeah, yeah. Well. I mean, but he knows how to turn it on. Mm -hmm. And and how to network and how to uh, oh he's amazing at yeah. it yeah but trust me I it, it, I know there's times where he he would want to want to be by himself and do his oh own I thing. bet I think all goths are introverted in it, some um, respects I mean it's different when we were out there together but I think all, it's hard on all of us it's socially exhausting it is exhausting for sure right. Like, I felt so bad because I was like, no, I really wasn't trying to snub you guys. I actually honestly didn't even know you were there. Like, I didn't, I have no recollection of that conversation, right. you know? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. That's, that wasn't what I was trying to do, well, you know? Well, you are becoming a goth celebrity. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, it, it, oh, you are. It's, 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 from, it's from, from, I, you're uh, probably, actually at this point, you're, uh, you're probably a bigger celebrity than I am at the, in the goth scene. But uh, people know me, but still. But in I, I have to say, days. I, well, in MySpace days, I was, I was, uh, yeah, that was, I was killing it. But <laughs> MySpace, the, that's so old school. I, yeah, I can't wait for that to come back. But <laughs> anyway, but I, I have to say, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. And Aww. and <laughs> and as I said, it's emblematic of the goth scene that you took your heartbreak and made it something beautiful. Well, and yeah. people have fallen in love, and it's because of you. And thank you, and thank you for coming on the show. And if people want to get a hold of you or want to join the, the goth scene uh, on Facebook and all the events you have, please let us know. We're, we're wrapping up the show, so. Cool. How do people get a hold of uh, you? Oh. If people in, in SoCal want to join the the, day, the uh, Facebook group, how do they do that? Well, you just look up the group. I mean, it's just SoCal Gothic Dating. Okay. Yeah, and or um, you can just, I mean, you can find our picnics. It's right. just Macabre Picnic. Macabre Picnic. And yeah. the next one will be April 19th. Yes. At Oddfell's uh, Cemetery. Yes. And there'll be like a clothing swap for that too. Yes. Cool. And, uh, and, and uh, which is good. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, if, uh, if a woman could fit into my shirt, <laughs> maybe that's the love of my life that's been waiting for me. So, Isabel, you've been, a, you've been a delight. I know you were a little nervous. I know this is your first podcast, but you were terrific. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, no problem. Thanks. Thanks for coming. And, Nicole, you know the drill. You go ahead. Tell everybody what's going on with you. Oh, I'm having a wonderful year so far. I have two books, Some Fucked Up Shit and Some Fucked Up Shit Ghosts. And I am in talks to have one of my stories, the last one that just came out, which is on my Facebook periodically. I sneakily will give you guys a preview. That one is in talks to becoming a short film. So I have made it my goal this year to try to get more film. And that's what we're working on right now. So everything I'm doing involves being behind a camera in some way. So if people want to follow you on social media, how do they do that? I'm at Nicole6Books on Instagram. I am I'm sorry. I'm at the friends limit on Facebook. You cannot add me. You may follow me, but I cannot add you back. Please follow me on Instagram or I'll follow you back. Okay. And goth comedian on all social media, everybody. Well, first off, Hannah's grandpa, get well. And everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. Bye. Bye.